स्थापकाय धर्म से सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठा रामकृष्णा ते नम हसतोमा सद्गमय तमसोमाज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मातंगमय ओ शांति 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 लेट अस ऑफर अवर सेल्यूटेशन टू श्री रामकृष्ण हु एस्टाब्लिश्ड रिलीजन इन द ट्रू स्पिरिट who integrated all religions of the world let us pray to him to lead us from unreal to the real from darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge from death to immortality today's topic marks of greatness people want to become great but there are so many shades of greatness there are some who are very great in sport field there are some scientists who are very great in their research work so what do we mean by marks of great of all the greatness we give importance to the spiritual greatness a person who is great spiritually he is really great he is loved by everyone in this universe nobody dislikes him and he dislikes none that is a tremendous quality which is spiritual greatness many incarnations have come to show us that fine divine quality it is only in human life we can manifest such greatness so we should aspire for that as soon as we see a remarkable goodness in a person we immediately spontaneously call him what a godly man he is spontaneously even though we may not believe the existence of god still it comes out immediately what a remarkable person seems to be very godly man after all who is god it is he who loves everyone who is concerned with the whole humanity who is concerned with the whole universe not simply concerned with particular section of people or particular country no that is why it is declared in the bhagavad gita ईश्वर सर्वभूता हृदय अर्जुन ठति वॉट ए फेमस स्टेटमेंट इट ईज आई एम रिसाइडिंग इन एवरी वन हार्ट दट इज वॉट लॉर्ड कृष्ण से इेस्पेक्टिव ऑफ कैस्ट कलर क्रीड और रेस और कंट्री इन ईच एंड एवरी वन देर इज द डिवाइन स्पार्क दट इज द स्पार्क ऑफ द सुप्रीम स्पिरिट दैट विच वी कॉल गॉड god is nothing but that supreme divine light which ensures remarkable peace and tranquility which ensures stability in our life that is what is to be understood by god shri ramakrishna has come swami vivekananda has come in this modern age to show to the people to manifest the remarkable spiritual quality that is inherent in every one what is that it is the spiritual strength spiritual strength unparalleled it can stand any test in this world it can make break through any hardships it can pass through any circumstances and situations and environments he is not shaken in the least that is the spiritual strength it is that spiritual strength that made swami vivekananda visit 
this great land America. Penniless he came, without any friends he came, not knowing any, anybody in this country. Yet, what forced him to come to this land of freedom, to this land who love liberty, who love freedom? What made Swami Vivekananda to come to this land? It is the remarkable quality of divine love. He was concerned with the whole humanity. He was deeply moved by the distress of the people. So he came to show the path, to show the right path, to give them correct interpretation of religion, to give practical Vedanta, not simply theorizing or not to be dogmatic or fanatic. No, that is the remarkable quality, that is spiritual greatness. Accepting all the religions of the world, tremendous dimension. So, we must try to understand the importance of this kind of spiritual greatness. So, the real greatness is not referred to the material success or success in some kind of enterprise in the material world which we experience every day. That is nothing compared to the spiritual greatness. The real greatness is achieved by the unfoldment of spiritual power. It is inherent in everyone, so it is possible. If it were not with us, it would not have been possible at all to manifest that quality. So, a man of spiritual greatness only experiences maximum peace and joy. So, the first important mark of greatness, strength. Who is really called strong? Is it mere physical strength, muscle power? He who controls his anger. Secondly, the second important quality of greatness, he is not ashamed to learn even from a child. Third, he is content with whatever he has. He is not disturbed because he didn't have some things. Fourthly, he does not hesitate in giving due respect to everyone, whoever it may be. He respects everyone. He respects the whole universe. Now we shall tackle these important qualities which we have classified as marks of greatness. There are so many marks of greatness. In fact, if you read Bhagavad Gita, there is a big list in Sita Prajna Lakshana. Man of study wisdom. Now, anger is to be fought with remarkable strength. Because the anger is the destroyer of person's peace and tranquility. Anger is the gateway to hell. It entangles one more and more to wickedness. It binds person to abomination. In Bhagavad Gita, there is a famous passage where Sri Krishna clearly points out, Trividham narakasyedam dwaram nashanamatmanaha kamaha krodaha Tatha Lobaha Tasma Detatriam Tejet. Very clearly specified. Krodha, anger, that is a gateway leading to ruination of a person. Because of this anger, people commit all sorts of crimes. He who controls his anger is said to be really strong. We have seen in the lives of spiritual persons. How even under provocation and insult, they never showed temper, but maintained their calmness. That is a remarkable quality. To give an instance, once Girish Chandra Ghosh, who became a staunch devotee of Sri Ramakrishna in his later years, who completely surrendered to Sri Ramakrishna, who gave his power of attorney to him, after which he remained perfectly calm. 
during his formative period he was used to take to drinking he used to drink lot of liquors once he was under that influence of liquor he uttered very abusive language which should not be even heard of by any sensible person all the devotees who were sitting around shri ramakrishna they became furious because girish was uttering all nonsense about shri ramakrishna not knowing what he is talking about so these people were about to punish him just at that time moment shri ramakrishna the personification of kindness and love restrained them girish continued to abuse shri ramakrishna never uttered a word he simply swallowed everything whatever he said there is another instance where shri ramakrishna has shown his perfect state of calmness how he could win over the element of anger once haladar a kalighat priest he became jealous of shri ramakrishna since mathur babu a very rich man of that time was very fond of shri ramakrishna so whenever mathur babu would come to dakshineshwar temple he would pay respects to shri ramakrishna and spend few hours talking with him but he would not go to this haldar the kaligat priest so he wanted to know what was the secret there was nothing secret shri ramakrishna was personification of love and affection so all people would go so that way mathur babu also came once haldar came to mathur babu's house where he found shri ramakrishna sitting all alone he thought that this was the correct situation to teach shri ramakrishna a lesson so he began to shake the body of master and said tell me how could you captivate mathur how is it that he always obeys you the master couldn't answer because he was not conscious of the outside world he was in a samadhi state poor fellow that kaligat priest how could he understand that but in an angry mood haldar he kicked the master with great force and used all sorts of abusive language but shri ramakrishna the personification of humility never reacted in the least now there is another remarkable instance where we find shri ramakrishna demonstrating his exemplary composure you may know all these incidents still it is very appropriate to tell that in this present context one night after 12 o'clock or so shri ramakrishna had gone out to panchavati to do meditation there was one devotee a disciple sleeping in the master's room that day after some time he woke up and found there was no master there that disciple's name was yogindranath so he went out he could not see where shri ramakrishna had gone immediately he thought oh probably shri ramakrishna might have gone to holy mother's room which is very nearby now i can catch him when he comes back he began to doubt the character of shri ramakrishna he could not think otherwise he did not dream that shri ramakrishna would have gone for meditation because nobody knew that people would meditate after 12 o'clock generally we all go to sleep so he just 
he was waiting at a corner in the dead night just to see whether Sri Ramakrishna would come out of in Nahabat. He was just waiting. He heard the sound of slippers. He was nervous for the moment. He began to see here and there. Then he found that sound was approaching him. And the dark night, a figure was approaching him. Who was that figure? It was Sri Ramakrishna himself. He was directly coming from Panchavati and he could notice somebody standing in the corner. So he just came straight to him. Oh, Yogen, what are you doing here? Why are you standing? Then Yogendranath could not talk at that moment. He felt ashamed that he had doubted his master. He felt terribly pained at heart. But Sri Ramakrishna said, Don't worry. It is good you have tested me. There is nothing wrong. But try to raise your mind and keep on the divine thoughts. You will progress well in the spiritual life. I appreciate your testing me. I am not angry about you, about that. So he showered love and showed more affection to Yogindranath, who became one of the foremost disciples of Sri Ramakrishna in the later years. Buddha has given us a significant teaching. He who holds back rising anger like a rolling chariot, him I call a driver. Other people are but holding the reins. What a fine statement. The second important quality which I marked, he is not ashamed to learn even from a child. He is said to be truly wise. We can see that in Sri Ramakrishna's life. He himself has said, as long as I live, so long do I learn. Knowledge is infinite. Who can say that I have known everything? Nobody can say that. Because it is infinite. Knowledge is infinite. So learning is refining. The more we learn, the more we become refined. That's the attitude we should have. If we have the attitude of learning, then our ego is subdued. The more we become humble, the more we become nearer and closer to God. So this attitude of ever learning is a hallmark of true humility. So with this perspective we must look upon the life. Life is a school of learning which is always in session. Intuition and experience are the best teachers there. Observation and reason are their valuable allies in instructing the students of all ages and outlooks and attitudes. We can learn what life means or ought to mean. Let us scan the first verse in the Bhagavad Gita which has got tremendous spiritual significance. Dharma Kshetre Kurukshetre Samaveta Yuyutsavaha Mamakaf Pandavas Chaiva Kimakurvata Sanjaya Dharma Kshetre Kurukshetre The Bhagavad Gita starts from Dharma. Dharma Kshetra and Kurukshetra, these are the two words used there. And their coexistence in the verse make us learn that life is the field of war between good and evil and that we are called upon to put forth energetic endeavors to see that the good and the true triumph over the forces of evil. There are two other most significant words mentioned by Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita again. 
they are kshetra and kshetragnya in chapter 13 which is a great lesson for us what is kshetra kshetra is a body of ours which is a field of operation of the spirit within it is where the drama of human soul is enacted our body and mind must be made the vehicles for the expression of the spirit within the more we manifest the spirit within the more fulfillment we achieve in this life the kshetra in which the spirit of man has to express itself is dharma kshetra that is a field where the battle of righteousness has to be fought relentlessly the inveterate forces that have to be fought against are internal in character everyone has to fight them out we have come here to fight not to yield human life is meant for fighting the evil forces to whom we have to fight kama krodha loba etc anger jealousy hatred and all other vices these are the things to be fought our personality is a fabric woven of three strands sattva rajas and tamas the three important qualities what is rajas it is the dynamic element what is tamas it is a static element rajas generates forces of change whereas tamas tends towards changelessness and conservation while tamas is a thesis rajas is antithesis conflict is result of the one being pitted against the other this is the kurukshetra or the field of conflict it is only when the conflict is faced with knowledge and power generated by sattva that the kurukshetra becomes converted into dharma kshetra the man of learning always sharpens his intellect and wins the battle of life by the supreme faculty of discrimination what we call viveka we have that quality in us we have to develop it properly discrimination he is able to discriminate with definiteness between the self and the non self as the royal swan is able to separate milk from the water a person of such high degree of discrimination is said to be a truly wise one which is a mark of greatness such a person realizes his true nature and enjoys eternal peace and bliss there are so many ways of learning if we only have the attitude of learning but if we have ego more prominent in us then all learning is stopped so learning through keen observation of happenings around us would bring enlightenment in a certain place the fishermen were catching fish it so happened once as an eagle came there and snatched one of the fish and it was flying there were many crows they saw this they immediately chased the eagle they surrounded the eagle in all directions making a terrible noise whichever way the eagle flew with the fish the crows followed it so it became exhausted it could not fly any more then it came and sat on a tree because he could not fly any longer in that exhaustion that fish slipped away from its beak the crows at once let the eagle alone and flew after the fish now relieved of its worries the eagle rested for a while on the branch of a tree and it thought why i became so much restless and worried all these crows surrounded me they did not allow me to fly in any way that wretched fish was at the root of all my troubles i have not got rid of it and therefore i am at peace a sincere spiritual aspirant of keen observation can learn a lesson from this as long as a man has the fish that is when he is 
attached to the things of the world he must perform actions and consequently suffer from worry and anxiety and restlessness no sooner does he discard these sources of attachment the desires which are harmful for his spiritual unfoldment then his terrible activities fall away and he enjoys peace of soul there is another instance which sri ramakrishna has given in the gospel of sri ramakrishna you must have noticed how honey is stored in the comb hundreds of bees accumulate their honey by several days of hard labor but they can't enjoy their honey for a man soon breaks the comb and takes it away this is a great lesson for us that we should not hoard things we can learn a great lesson become truly wise one of the marks of greatness by an analogy given by shri ramakrishna there is water and milk if you keep the mind which is like milk in the world which is like water then the milk and water will get mixed that's why milk is kept in a quiet place to set into curd and then it is churned to get butter from it this butter does not mix with but floats on water <laughs> likewise through spiritual disciplines practiced in a quiet place churn the butter of knowledge and devotion from the milk of the mind then that butter can easily be kept in the water of the world it will not get mixed with the world the mind will float detached on the water of the world now the third important quality which i have referred a man of spiritual greatness he is always content with whatever he has he never grumbles never in the words of lord krishna santushto yena kena chit he is content with whatever he has he is content with the bare means of sustenance contentment is joy contentment is peace he does not worry himself about anything santosha is a remarkable mark of greatness man of contentment is ever cheerful and serene such a man is atmanye vasantushta he is always satisfied with his own divine spirit his mind is not attached by any things of the world his mind never likes to come down from the state of spirit no occasion or incident can disturb such a person for he has discontented himself with all that is anatman he has rejected all that is non self by the power of discrimination so such a person is never disturbed by ups and downs in life he has understood and realized the value of contentment so he is always cheerful and blissful of course there is an incident where we can see that remarkable quality of contentment which this incident also have referred in my previous talks that when alexander the great when he approached a saint he was so much fascinated by him he invited him to come to his country which he refused then alexander tried to persuade him in so many ways but he never liked to get away from the place where he was then he threatened to kill him then the saint burst into laughter what you are telling a greatest lie how can you kill me can you kill me i am deathless he was really dwelling in his own true nature what your sword can do it can cut my body into pieces that's all it cannot cut my spirit nayanam chindanti shastrani nayanam dahati pavakah nachainam kledayanti apo nashoshiti marutah this atman this divine spirit cannot be cut by sword cannot be wet by water cannot be burned 
by fire, cannot be blown away by wind. It's all pervading, it's everywhere. I am that. Alexander was amazed. And he is refusing all the uh, gifts Alexander offering him. He said, I will give you all comforts. Come, I will give you a separate palace for you to live on. But he rejected outright. I don't care for your palace. I don't want any of your comforts. I have found my comfort in the divine spirit. Nothing else can give me more comfort than this. That is the realization. So, Alexander was completely transformed by the sage's words. There is another instance. Sri Ramakrishna's mother, her name was Chandramani Devi, Mathur Babu, who was looking after Sri Ramakrishna's needs. He was overwhelmed by seeing the spiritual personality of Sri Ramakrishna. He was amazed at the childlike simplicity of the Master. He therefore cherished a desire to make some permanent provision for Sri Ramakrishna so that he would not be in any trouble in case he wants anything in the future. But Sri Ramakrishna's supreme spirit of renunciation would not entertain any such ideas. He would outright reject all such things. I don't want anything, not a pie, not a cent. So Mathur thought he could carry out his intention. Suppose he goes to Sri Ramakrishna's mother. So one day he came to her. She was at that time living at Dakshineshwar. Mathur Babu appealed to her to ask him anything she wanted. Whatever she wants, she can ask for. Chandra Devi said, What? What do I need? What do I need, my son? He is addressing Mathur Babu as her own son. You have already provided me clothing, food, all these things I am getting. I am not at all in need of anything more. But Mathur was a very rich man of the time. Anybody else in Chandramani's position could have gladly asked for some big amount of money. Mathur didn't leave her. Again and again he pressed her to ask something from him. When Mathur Baba was asking him again and again, then Chandramani said, All right. If you must give something, then buy for me some five cents of five cents worth of tobacco leaves. I want to make a tooth powder. Mathur Babu was greatly moved. He moved to tears at this idle contentment. She never wanted anything. He made salutations to her in great respect. And Madhur Babu said to himself, Who but such a mother could give birth to a son like Sri Ramakrishna? In Holy Mother's life also we have got an instance where Mother also showed this remarkable quality of santushtaha, contentment. Once she had gone on pilgrimage to Rameshwar, the king of the place had made all arrangements for her visit. Then the king came and asked Holy Mother to choose any of the diamonds or precious stones lying there. He was happy to give, but Holy Mother immediately said she needed nothing. This remarkable contentment made Holy Mother supremely great. Then, a person of remarkable quality, he gives respect to everyone. He does not hesitate to honor anybody. 
that is another remarkable quality which i mentioned earlier samam sarveshu bhuteshu tishtantam parameshwaram vinashyat sva vinashyantam yav pasyati sapasyati bhagavad gita the same lord pervades all beings as there is the same heat in every particle of fire he exists in all created forms as rain pouring down from the sky consists only of water there may be varieties of creatures but the essence within them is the same just as it is the same akasha sky space which fills both a pot and a house it is the same space so he who has developed such a vision honors every creature the characteristic of such a great man is given in another verse by shri krishna in the gita vidya vinaya sampanne brahmane gavihastini shunichaiva swapake cha pandita samadarshina a man of wisdom a gyani a man of true knowledge he looks with an equal eye on learned and humble brahmin a cow an elephant or even a dog or an outcast he does not distinguish anyone the eternal is the same in all in animals as in men in learned ones as in despised outcasts the light of parmatman dwells in all bodies and is not affected by the differences in the bodies it illumines the gyani sees the one god in all beings and develop the quality of equal mindedness which is characteristic of the great such a man therefore shows no disrespect to any being even they give respect to the animals generally we we are so indifferent towards animals but a real spiritual person will not harm anyone that is why there is a saying a real sage where he lives around about his cottage all the animals live in peace lions tigers all the animals they don't quarrel they don't fight they live in peace to give again example in holy mother's life there was a pet cat in the house of holy mother it was so arranged that milk was to be given to the cat daily though it was being given every day you know the animals in spite of it sometimes they steal one day one of the monastic members was uh, torturing the cat seeing that holy mother became grave and said to that person look why are you doing that why are you torturing the animal you can only scold but do not beat it feed it regularly and see that it doesn't go to any other house to steal food she then reminded him solemnly do not beat the cat i am dwelling inside the cat also this is the statement of holy mother you must know i am living there too if you are torturing that animal you are torturing me directly you used to love everyone would show respect to everyone so she would render all help in all possible ways to whomsoever come to her during festival days she would give sumptuous food to them many times holy mother would distribute sweets and fruits to all these people the villagers were overwhelmed by her love each one of them received love kindness and respect from holy mother one day this watchman said to mother oh mother people call you a goddess the divine mother and by such other names i do not understand all this the holy mother said gently well you don't have to understand just remember that you are my brother ambika and i am your sister sharda what a wonderful statement one more incident of her remarkable greatness in treating everyone with due respect there was a muslim bandit who was very ferocious at that time who was considered untouchable one day he was invited for a lunch in holy mother's house he sat for the meals for the lunch there was a lady 
but she was not serving him properly because she was castridden she began to throw the food at the plate from a distance a glaring insult and utter disrespect to the man who was eating holy mother saw these things she couldn't tolerate she immediately came she herself began to serve him with all kindness and with all respect as if she were his own mother not only that after the muslim had finished his lunch holy mother cleaned the place with her own hands that's the thing so holy mother then made a statement even as sharat sharadananda who was one of the great disciples of shri ramakrishna even as sharadananda is my son exactly so he is this muslim amjad this samadarshitva is remarkable mark of greatness samadarshitva that's the sanskrit word now the last quality is a person of spiritual greatness he is always peaceful who is perfectly tranquil he who has controlled the mind who moves among the objects with his senses and the restraint and who is free from attachment and aversion again lord krishna has pointed out in the gita ragadvesha vyukta istu vishaya indriya ischaran atmavashyair vidheya atma prasada madhigachati the person of this great mark of tranquility which is mind completely under control allows his senses to enjoy these objects that are necessary for the maintenance of life but always preserves the evenness of his mind whether the objects be pleasant or unpleasant now let us try to understand the anatomy of raga and dvesha which helps us to get rid of them to attain tranquility what is this raga raga means attachment raga dvesha means likes and dislikes what we find in the world is a mixture of happiness and misery different thoughts bring happiness and misery in varying degrees small bits of thoughts often do not give us any particular happiness or unpleasantness stress or tension it is only applied thoughts thoughts in which we give mental expression to our worldly attachments and thoughts pertaining to things from which we try to get joy and happiness that creates stress and tension in us now to consider a case a mother has sent her son to europe well the son has gone but the mother begins to worry night and day why because of attachment because she is deeply liking her son so she is worrying what does it mean her mind goes out reaches out issues forth to an object which is beyond the comprehension of her senses at the moment her worries are purely imaginary she expects her son will give her happiness if he is with her and when he is not she is troubled it's all imaginary in this kind of happiness or unhappiness the mind projects goes out to something away from us as long as the sun is in europe this stress is there almost constantly sometimes it may be less sometimes it may be more depending on how many other thoughts she is entertaining when the sun writes that he will return soon immediately the mother becomes comparatively happy the projection of her mind is reduced a little and her stress is lessened well the sun returns when the sun returns the projection is completely withdrawn but then is she happy permanently no she is temporarily happy why the very next day she is unhappy on another score maybe her son did not like the food she had prepared and he did not 
eat well according to her satisfaction again the mind is projected out the mother was thinking all along i am unhappy because my son was away if her contention had been true she should have been perfectly happy once her son had returned why is she unhappy now it is a constant recurring misunderstanding in us that we are happy or unhappy because of the external world and circumstances and the things outside but the truth is that as long as our mind is projecting outside is showing forth away from ourselves towards the objects of the world we are subject to worries and anxieties the moment the mind is withdrawn back to ourselves from its projections we are contented and we are happy and peaceful so mind without projection is said to be in tranquil the secret of true happiness is a non issuing forth non projecting mind this projection is caused by raga dvesha and bhaya likes and dislikes and fear what is raga it is the tendency in man to go out for external objects to get satisfaction what is dvesha dvesha is a tendency to avoid things which give him displeasure raga is what makes us say or feel i want this give me more i want sukha all this is raga dvesha makes us say i do not want this take it away from me i do not want dukkha these are all different shades of dvesha give a child some sugar it will put its tongue out and try to get more and more thus expressing raga it tastes the sugar it wants more give it something bitter it will spit out this is dvesha these two features are congenital they are with us right from our birth all living beings are deluded by these two forces raga and dvesha wanting more and more of the things that give pleasure and avoiding things that give displeasure how do the forces of raga and dvesha affect man they make him more and more selfish propelled by raga he wants to grab things from others and wants more and more and he is not satisfied with whatever things he gets dvesha makes him dislike and hate some things and persons so that means raga and dvesha are at the root of all crimes for we commit crimes only out of selfishness brothers fight father and son fight neighbors fight go to the cause why they are fighting the cause is always selfishness which arises out of raga and dvesha so by spiritual discipline and following the ideal of men of marks of greatness we must free ourselves from the clutches of raga and dvesha to attain ever blissful tranquility so there are great men and women in the world who have remarkable spiritual greatness manifested in their life even reading them makes us more peaceful it soothes us so let us try to cherish those spiritual quality in our life by reading them by understand them and practicing them thank you all